This video is a long time coming. Let's talk about rumination. Do you know what rumination is? I would say most, if not all, individuals who struggle with OCD ruminate. Even those who don't struggle with OCD. The official definition of rumination is the action of chewing the cud. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That is not it. How about this? A deep or considered thought about something. That's better. We can all be deep in thought from time to time. It can whisk us away from the present moment. It can distract us from noticing the surroundings around us. Some have said that rumination is often considered to be a silent mental health issue. No one can see what's going on except for the person. They often don't know the harm that they are causing themselves because of this rumination. But why would thinking about something very deeply be an issue? Well, it only tends to be an issue when it actually starts interfering in the person's life. When it comes to anxiety, rumination is essentially a way for you to gain some answers, to problem solve whatever you're feeling anxious about, those things you're worried about. It's trying to problem solve the future trying to problem solve the what ifs. Think through every scenario. If you think about yourself, are you ever able to actually come up with a good answer? A good answer to those things that you're ruminating about. Because for most, when they come up with a good answer, their brain starts doubting and thinking all over again. I would guess that the answer is no. Because we think we have a good answer. We react as if we have a good answer. We don't know the future. We don't have a time machine to go ahead to see what's actually going to happen or not. But you're behaving as if your rumination, the problem solving you came up with is true. It's real. Rumination is a huge part of obsessive compulsive disorder. Individuals who struggle with this often are looking for certainty. They want to know for sure that what they are experiencing is true or not. If they are really that type of person or not. If they would really do that thing or not. If that catastrophe in the future is going to happen or not. Rumination is thinking about all of these things. Thinking is good, but this is thinking about your specific topic or fear when it comes to your anxiety and OCD. Often rumination is just trying to figure it all out if you couldn't tell already. Sometimes people worry, is this even OCD or is it not? That's its own rumination cycle that people get stuck into. You don't want the problem to happen. So you're thinking through it. Here's an example. Somebody may experience some contamination OCD. They may touch the door handle and their brain says, ah, I'm going to attach some meaning to this. Here's where the rumination comes in. It might sound like this. I cannot believe you just touched that door handle. Do you know who's touched that door handle? What if somebody was sick? Do you know if you touched your face after you touched that door handle? No, no, no. It's probably okay that you touched it, but wait, but what if you get sick though? Ah, if I get sick, then I won't be able to go to work. If I can't go to work, then how am I supposed to be able to support my family? No, you're probably fine. Don't worry about it. It's probably all right. But you know, just in case, go wash your hands because you don't want to get sick. You don't want that catastrophe happening. So the person gives into the behavior. They wash their hands because that rumination sent them down that path. And then it comes back. Okay, I know you just washed your hands, but did you know you touched your pants afterwards? Like it's on your pants, you wash your hands. I know you touched your phone. Are you sure that's not something you need to wash also? How about you just change your clothes just in case? Well, and second thought, how about you just shower? Change your clothes, shower, then you will be sure. But I know like you didn't clean off that door handle. You know, you know one of your children just touched it. I know you showered, I know you changed your clothes, but maybe you can go get your, get your kids to wash their hands. As you can see, the cycle continues, 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 finds the next problem, finds the next problem, the next what if. That is rumination. People think they're problem solving. They're doing a lot of just in case behaviors. They're trying to think through and prevent whatever the fear is from happening. Often I see rumination as very automatic. They are natural thoughts that just come right in. They throw out these threats as quick as they can. And what matters is how you're going to react to it. If you go down the road and problem solve this, you are going to get stuck and you are doing a compulsion. The compulsions are those things that keep you trapped. All your brain knows is that it saved you. It helped you problem solve a potential problem and you fixed it. But what if there was never a problem to begin with? What if your brain completely lied to you? 
You cannot think your way through a fear. I say, don't engage with rumination. Do not give it any power whatsoever. This is a very tough task. And some people just say, stop. But how do you stop? Here are some tips that you can use. Make sure you are giving your brain the same answer every single time it threatens you. Every single time it's trying to problem solve. It says you hit someone with your car and it wants you to think through the whole situation, go back, make sure and check. And you're saying, yeah, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. That is how I'm taking power away. That's actually how I'm not engaging with the conversation in my head. And when it gets really annoying, you're like, totally, man, totally hit someone with my car. That is amazing. You can agree with it. I can only imagine the OCD screaming at you when you give it an answer like that, that you just agreed with it. Are you sure you actually love your partner? You know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Are you attracted to somebody of your same gender? Yeah, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Your family will be ruined. Yeah, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Will I harm my child? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. There is not a topic or a theme that you cannot use this phrase with. Everybody thinks they're special. They think that their specific topic or fear doesn't apply to this situation, that you cannot say maybe, maybe not to this. It is simply untrue. To help you not ruminate, it's committing to use this phrase every single time and not engage with it. Giving it the same answer every time shows your brain that like, hey, I can keep throwing these out your way, but you're just not giving into it. So maybe I need to slow it down. Even if you feel like this one's different, give it the same answer. Some choose to have different catchphrases. Like, that's not my thing. Sure, man, totally. Thanks for your opinion today. That's amazing. These statements need to be followed up with not engaging in the compulsions because you can't say, I may or may not get sick, but I'm going to go wash my hands just in case. That doesn't work. I may or may not hurt my child, but I'm going to make sure I hide all the knives just in case. That doesn't work. People who are committed are using the maybe, maybe not statements and they are trying as hard as they can to not do these compulsions because you can't say maybe, maybe not and then do the compulsion because that gets you back in that rumination because you're problem solving, you're thinking through it, you're avoiding the problem that you think is a problem. Your brain needs to learn that when you're not doing the compulsion, you're not engaging in the rumination, that that catastrophe that came up in your head didn't happen. And when it doesn't happen, it says, huh, maybe I lied to you. Maybe I need to slow this down. You're not asking for reassurance. That is the whole point. Stay uncertain. Do not figure it out. We stop the rumination by stopping it in its tracks, not giving it a satisfied answer. One of the first parts is recognizing that you're even ruminating. <laughs> Did you know you're ruminating? You might think about, what is the reason I'm thinking through this right now? Am I just genuinely curious? Or do I feel this urge and this need to know this answer right now? If that's the case, we're not doing it. If you're just curious, go ahead, man. So think about that. If it's an urge, right now you need it, don't engage. It's actually your choice. You get to choose. The thoughts will come in, that's the automatic part, but the way you are responding to it, that is the part you have complete control over. So give yourself more credit for that. So did you know that I created a very specific course for OCD? It takes you through understanding yourself, the treatment, and all the way through maintaining to your progress. We talk about rumination, hierarchies, exposures, writing scripts, and so much more. There's actually over 41 videos in this thing. I can't even believe it. I'll link it down in the description below. It's different than these videos because it is structured. It takes you through what you need to know. You can actually even preview it for free. So here's the questions I have for you guys. Do you ruminate? What do you ruminate about? If you feel like this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up because that means other people can find it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.